So I've been picking at the scabs on my arm recently and I don't know if anyone else does this, but I'll pretty much like squeeze my arms and pick at my arms to the point where my arm will bleed. And I get really, really insecure about this because I think other people can like see the scabs on my arm. So I'll like cover it up with makeup or I'll wear a long sleeve shirt because I'm scared of other people judging me for me picking my scabs, right? And the times in my life where I do this is always when I'm doubting myself, right? When I'm super anxious. When I don't do this, I choose to control myself because I know, well, I don't want other people to see my arms or I know it's going to give me scars, right? But in a point in my life where I'm really anxious, I tend to do it again. Now, would you say it's logical to like blame whoever's making me anxious because they're making me anxious, so I'm picking my arm, which means they're giving me scars, is that logical? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's absolutely ridiculous. That doesn't make any sense. And you know, sometimes I'll pick these scabs without even knowing that it's problematic, but other times I'll know me picking my scabs is problematic, but I'll continue to do it because it gives me a sense of comfort. It reminds me of a time where I felt comfortable in a weird way. And this isn't just about scabs on my arm. This is about people. This is about situations in life. Sometimes we avoid the things in our life we know are causing us harm. And sometimes we inflict that harm on ourselves by choosing to stay in a situation. But our state of victimhood keeps us in that situation and keeps us thinking that, you know, it's their fault that we're in this situation when we are playing an active part, part in it. We hang out with that person we don't get along with. We contact our ex after months of no contact. You know, we choose to fight other people and choose to stay in this cycle because it reminds us of a time in our life where we felt more free or it reminds us of something in our childhood, essentially. Trauma, 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 trauma. <laughs> Sometimes in life, we convince ourselves that the situations we take part in, that intuitively we know we shouldn't be in anymore, are actually helping us because we're scared of what's next. We're in this lack mindset. We have this tunnel vision on where we can't see anything else but this situation. The situation is the biggest thing in our life, right? But when you take a step back, you realize that, number one, I'm not a victim. And number two, I'm playing an active part in this situation. I'm putting myself in that situation. It's me that's picking my arms and it's my reaction that is keeping me in this situation. Maybe I should deal with my anxiety in other ways. Rather than picking my arm, maybe I should go and go to the gym or take a walk or journal. But instead, I'll cause my own self harm because I'm anxious and because I don't have an outlet for these things and I'll blame other people. What's going on everyone? My name's Natalie and in today's video I'm going to be talking about being avoidant or just generally being a passive person and the state of perpetual victimhood that we sometimes put ourselves in. Now, Use your own intuition when it comes to this video. I'm not going to be talking about everyone's situation. If it doesn't resonate with you, it doesn't resonate with you. And I think sometimes there are some circumstances in our life where we are the victim. You know, someone did something to hurt me. I'm not going to just blame myself for what I went through. That's not what I'm saying. But there are situations where we put ourselves in situations where maybe that person already lied to us, already did this to us already caused us a lot of grief, a lot of harm, but we choose to stay in that situation because we fear better. We fear what would happen if we let it go. And the thing about always playing the victim is some people in your life will call you out for your state of victimhood and you'll still be in the state of victimhood to where you can't even see that they're trying to help you, right? And in doing so, we cut off good friendships, good relationships from our lives. And I've absolutely done this. I've absolutely played a part in my own victimhood. Have shitty things happened to me? Absolutely. But I've also utilized those stories to continue you playing a part in this cycle and um, I'm still doing that in some ways in my life but in this video I'm going to be talking about it and sharing ways that I'm trying to break the cycle and also I just want to make the comment section you know a very open dialogue of other people's experiences. 
I don't want it to come off as I'm giving you advice or telling you what to do in your life. That's not what I'm doing. I'm mainly doing this video because I'm going through a really hard part in my life and this video is kind of for me. It's kind of a pep talk for me, but if it relates to you, then join the club because uh, <laughs> it's difficult being avoidant and I feel like a lot of the time people only talk about being anxious when it's difficult avoiding every problem in your life or when you're confronted with a problem or you're just really passive to where like when there's an obvious issue in your life you just turn the other way and you're like I don't see that <laughs> because you are so scared of what will happen when you face that problem you think that something bad is gonna happen or when you stand up for yourself that nobody's gonna be in your life, you know? Sometimes we'll keep people in our lives and allow them to disrespect us because we don't wanna be alone. I'm sorry about it, you're gonna be alone in life, okay? You are going to be alone at some point in your life. Don't ever stay just because you fear being alone. That is one of the worst things. I, if I could tell myself that two years ago, I absolutely would. I, I would. That is the one piece of advice I would tell my young self because I did so many things to continue having friendships in my life or to continue being with people that are just not meant for me, you know? And when I tend to get in this avoidant state where, you know, I'm ignoring my problems, I notice that there's this like tenseness in my heart, you know? It's, it's like I'm shutting down and I don't really know how to stop it or I don't know how to identify the problem without identifying the insecurity within me because to identify the problem is to also identify the cycle and identify your current role in it, okay? Because sometimes it, it's easy to identify, oh, this is a problem and this person is doing something wrong to me, right? But it's difficult to then act on it and say, I am not gonna tolerate this disrespect. I am not going to continue to be in this situation. I'm not gonna play a part in it anymore. And I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions and I want you to think very, very critically and maybe do some own shadow work on your own with these questions. Where does this avoidant pattern come from? Where in your childhood can you remember a time where you were told to ignore your problems? You might have grown up in a very, very toxic household and you were always avoiding your problems. So maybe there's a sense of comfort in constantly being in chaos because that's what it was for me girl um we can twist it many ways honestly identifying where it came from and going back to your childhood and being like oh it came from here that's pretty generally easy but what's difficult is stopping yourself when you're actually in the cycle right which brings me to my next question what is my story? And what I mean by your story is we all have a story that we tell people about a situation we're in, right? If you're about to talk to your friends about this situation you're in, what are you going to tell them? How are you going to paint yourself out to be? What role do you play in this story? If you're watching this video and you tend to be passive or avoidant like I am, you most of the time will play the victim. And sometimes you are the victim. You know, in some instances, you are the victim and that is valid. It's valid to be like, this person did something shitty to me. It's absolutely valid to do that. However, sometimes you are the problem. You are the problem because someone will be actively disrespecting you and you'll stay in that situation and complain to other people and when other people call you out and say, well, why don't you do this? Why don't you stand up for yourself? Why don't you exit the situation? Give you solutions to the problem, you continue. And that is what I want you to focus on because, oh my gosh, the amount of times that I have simultaneously played the victim and then have also continued to be in the story, it's just, you gotta pick one. You gotta pick one. If you're gonna be in a situation, you can't just constantly play the victim and not acknowledge your part in it. And because I'm avoidant, I'll go into this state where I suppress my emotions and I'm like, everything is fine. Like, when you know you're an avoidant person, when something will happen to you and you'll immediately be like, okay. <laughs> like you will literally like not even register in your brain that it's happening because you go into a state of denial. And a lot of the time your denial phases are a lot longer than your grieving periods. Like sometimes I wish I was the type of person who something happens to me and I immediately grieve and I'm immediately crying and I let it all out. And then a bit later, then I'm good, right? No, I'm the type of person like some things don't hit me until months later. 
And that's what's so hard about being avoidant because like you'll suppress things and you'll act like everything's fine. And then all of a sudden it comes up right? It's like you have this beautiful ceramic plate, right? And someone grabs that plate out of your hand and smashes it on the ground. And instead of cussing that person out and saying, uh, are you gonna buy me a new plate? What you do is you look at them and go, oh, I'm sorry. And then you just start picking up the plate and you try to glue this plate together. And then for the next month, you'll use this plate. And while you're eating (laughs) the pieces of ceramic with your salad, right? While you're eating it, You'll complain to the person that broke your plate. You know, I really don't like this plate that much. Do you want me to buy you a new one? No, it's fine. What are you doing? That is what it's like being avoidant. And sometimes you come across as a passive aggressive person. And I've noticed this about myself. I'll always be the person who's like, I hate passive aggressive people. But passive aggressiveness, like, I get passive aggressive because I'll suppress how I feel and then it'll come out in these little bursts of passive aggression. But that's not healthy. That's really not. Setting boundaries is hard, but it's even more hard to be passive aggressive and then cause a problem for someone else because you didn't communicate how you felt from the beginning. It makes it harder for yourself in the long run. And that's something I'm learning myself. I'm not Buddha, okay? I don't know all of these things. These are things I'm learning in my life, but... And it all goes back to this lack mindset. We we try to fit something in our lives that no longer belongs because we fear what will happen if we let it go. We're like, you know, nothing's gonna come along. You know, I'm never gonna have any friends. I'm unlovable, I'm this. And you, you gotta stop yourself. You gotta stop yourself in that narrative because even though your, your brain sometimes loves that narrative, okay? Sometimes you enjoy being in a state of, oh, I have no friends because it continues that story. But when you take personal responsibility for, okay, the reason I don't have friends is because I stay in my room all the time and I, you know, ignore people and I never try to reach out to anyone when I'm having a hard time. That's another thing, like being avoidant, it's like, I'll wonder why none of my friends are reaching out to me, but I don't reach out when I have a hard time, I just expect them to know. And not everyone's gonna be able to read your mind they're just not and and it's like I'll be like why is that person not reaching out to me but then like if they do reach out I'm like oh I'm fine like that's what we need to stop you you got to stop lying to yourself about certain situations reach out to people for help and if you don't have people in your life acknowledge that there might be a reason for that okay acknowledge that there might be a reason why there's no people in my life take personal responsibility it's always difficult it's always difficult to take personal responsibility but once you do you set yourself free of that story you set yourself free of that narrative and you overall live a better life let me know in the comments if you relate to anything i'm talking about and let me know your personal experiences with being an avoidant person now you know take what resonates Okay, some of you might not be avoidant, but let me know if you want more videos like this. I know in my other videos, I've done a lot of explosions and crazy edits, but in this video, I really just wanted to sit down because I'm going through some shit in my life and I just wanted to share the things I'm learning and I don't want it to come off as like, oh, I know everything and I'm a queen of healing, but... Yeah, I just wanted to share this because it's something that's been on my mind. Like this video, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.